This is the holy grail of lawn irrigation. I gotta show you something really freaking cool. I'm gonna show you how you can modify your existing system to get these into place so that you can use them. This head right here is going to replace 10 heads on my system down here. Well, not really. Let me explain this real quick. This thing is designed to go dead center. And if I could put it dead center, it would do every bit of this golf green with one head. I can't do that. I don't know if you guys have ever been golfing before, but finding a sprinkler head in the middle of a golf green, that ain't gonna cut it. Here's why I'm doing this. These heads right here, water and custom shapes. This whole thing is a custom shape. I went ahead and added up all the money that was wasted in overages and water out here, and I spent 543 extra dollars last year watering areas that were inefficient. That's a lot. They like to use the tagline, printing water with these, but for this case, this is gonna be printing money out here because over a couple of years, it's totally gonna pay for itself and year over year over year, I'm just making returns. Here's a couple of things you should know about the system in order to make sure that you can even do this. I'm running three quarter inch pipe out there. You need to either have three quarter or one inch pipe. That's what you need to be going with. You need to have at least eight to 10 gallons per minute of flow rate. You need to have between 60 and 80 PSI on your system. So this is the pipe that I'm gonna be terminating right here. This runs to the perimeter sprinklers on that side. I'm gonna do a cut. I'm throwing a 90 degree three quarter fitting on that. That's got my barb fit. And then I'm actually gonna position the sprinkler just back over here a little ways. I wanna get it as close to the wall as I can here so that it doesn't have anything to get in the way. But this gives me the right distance between every corner over here and it's gonna water in a pretty cool shape and still reach all the way to the peninsula and I'm not gonna have any blank spaces here. The couple things you should know are this. You need a minimum throw of five feet. Like that's, that's the closest the sprinkler can be to something. So you wanna get off the wall five or six feet or whatever corner you have that you don't want it to be hitting. That way you can program it to hit those corners just right. So remember that five feet is its minimum throw. 30 feet is the max. I suppose the biggest question in everybody's mind is gonna be this. I have an old sprinkler system. So what about these valves that I have in here? That's gonna be something that we're just gonna see and MacGyver and try to figure out if I can do what I wanna do. So we're off to the races now. This is the existing line coming off of my first valve. Uh, just cutting it, getting everything sort of mocked up and into place so I know exactly where I wanna put my head and giving myself just enough workspace to get this whole thing done. This is where I put on my own swing arm that I built rather than having the one that came with the system since mine is all three quarters and not a one inch fitting. This guy's gonna stick up just a touch, barely. I mean, I've got a ton of like rock under there that it's gonna be hard for me to get through to set that down any deeper, but I, that's okay. I mean, uh, the mower doesn't come through here. This is something I hit with my string trimmer. So I guess that's gonna be just fine. Nothing inside this ever needs to get watered. This is right on the edge of the fringe. So um, I think I'm just gonna be happy with that. So I just went around and capped any heads that were still on this line. There were only two. So uh, I got those shut. So now the only thing that's gonna be feeding water is over there. So now comes the big test. Can we pull apart the valves? Okay, so here's what I did here. I went ahead and took the valves apart, took all the screws off, and then pulled the diaphragm out. Now, I probably could have just done this with the spring, I don't really know. If you're an irrigation person out there, you can comment and let me know. But I went ahead, took the diaphragm, cut it out with a razor blade, set it back in there so it worked as a gasket, screwed everything back together, and voila, I had full flowing water and a non-functional valve. Well, now that the valve test is done and out of the way, that only took a couple of minutes to swap that out. I need to remind everybody out there that this is not the way that this is typically installed. If I were to do this as a totally fresh install, one thing that I would probably do different than uh, the way that, that Irigreen has this set up is I would actually probably run like a conduit for these cables. Um, you know, I'm, I'm running a risk having them be exposed, but I, you know, there's not really much I can do about it. Um, but if I were running a brand new line and I, I ran like a, a main line that went out and I was running these wires through, I would probably just go ahead and get another um, thin walled PVC and just send my wires down that line to and lay them, not even connect the pipe, just 
lay it in there to give a little bit of protection. The timer install here is super easy. It only took about two minutes to do. Just find a good place where you can access it easily. It's next to power, it's close to your Wi-Fi, and you'll have it hooked up in moments. Okay, so here's where we are right now. We're gonna go ahead and add the controller. I'm gonna go through these steps so that I have this thing all hooked up and it can connect to the Wi-Fi and uh, get this thing rocking and rolling. So let's see what we have to do here. Okay, let's go print some water. This is the part where you need to take the most time. Set your points, make sure you're checking for any overages, get your distances right, and know that you may have to do this a couple of times before it's totally dialed in. I think honestly this was the most satisfying part was programming everything and then getting to see how it ran afterwards. As you can see, it prints out a nice map and all of these dots are adjustable. It's so bizarre to watch a sprinkler go around and self-adjust and do next to no overspray. Now I've got my heads put back into place, buried, but I've got to put some, a little more work into that to pretty it up a little bit. I still have to bury my lines. That I haven't done yet. I'm just gonna run an edger, tuck that thing in, same thing right here. I wanna let you know, all in all, this whole thing, let's see, everything I did out here Three and a half hours. Pretty freaking awesome. Well, I got a tiny bit more dialing in to do out here. Not really a whole lot. I think this thing is ready to go. So, if you guys are interested in these things, there's a link down below. The folks over at Evergreen are nice enough to give you a discount if you put the code Loncology in there at checkout. So, you know, if you've been thinking about doing this and worried about all the work, um, this was a pretty dang easy job, and I'm off to the races. I'll be doing another video soon up here on the main lawn. We'll get the two in, and let's just see how this summer goes. Printing money. Printing money.